Dr. Hamish Mears. I'm an anaesthetist uh, um, based in Newcastle in New South Wales in Australia. And me and some very talented, extremely hard working, working friends from Sparkhouse Makerspace have uh, created uh, what we call the Spark Vent. Uh, it's a really super simple, uh, easy to make ventilator, and we've designed it uh, for purely for emergency use uh, during the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, it's completely untested, unregulated, and we're only putting it out there because the time is extreme and we hope that this may hopefully save lives. And potentially down the track in the long term, this ventilator may be used in places in the developing world where they can't uh, afford expensive ventilators. Now we've designed it to try and make it as simple as we possibly can and as safe as we possibly can. Um, and well, what it needs to run is just a, a just five litres, roughly five to seven and a half litres or so per minute of fresh gas flow. Um, it requires very low power, so under one watt of, uh, of energy and, and gravity. So we're essentially really relying on really simple um, and not hard to source things. Um, the tubing, everything, uh, the tubing here we've got is standard anaesthetic circuits. The other tubing is uh, just vinyl tubing. Um, the parts here are 3D printed, um, and uh, th these are just uh, PVC tubes. These are on the exhaust, so I think PVC is okay to use. Um, this is the one component made of PVC that's uh, related to the inspiratory side, and we possibly may be able to 3D print it. Um, so at first look, you might be a little bit uh, confused by everything that's going on, but essentially uh, what I imagine is in a normal uh, hospital bedroom, there'll be uh, on the wall, there'll be uh, piped uh, oxygen and air supply and on those will be flow meters similar to this one and so those flow meters drop the, the core atmosphere pressure in the hospital wall down to something a bit more usable and so you'll have two, uh, an oxygen and an air supply. So that's really handy because you can use and adjust the relative blends of those to vary how much oxygen the patient gets. That feeds into this little system here and here we've got a little accumulator just to sort of store the, the pressured gas. Um, this then comes up into this beautiful 3D printed cam. So essentially we've just got three valves in the system. The first valve just opens here and that pressurizes um, this bellows. So this system here is just a simple bellows system. In here is just air. Um, we're just using a weight and for weight we're just using water inside a bottle. Um, and there's basically just a, a cylinder inside another cylinder and there's a, a, a glove that we've just used to uh, make that uh, system airtight. Um, so this system is pressurizing up. You can see on the side here the tidal volume. And so this is uh, just a approximate, but it's around about 400 mils tidal volume. And uh, this system here is just showing the pressure just inside the bellows. Now when a patient, uh, this valve here is the inspiratory valve. When that opens, uh, that pressure is levered down through here in, in spiritually limb into our patient. So here's a happy patient, um, and there's their lungs getting ventilated. Using the system, we just uh, this is uh, we're using oxygen tubing. This is just uh, for our pressure gauge. So on here, you can actually see the pressures we're delivering. Um, so this uh, particular gauge is in kilopascals, so you just multiply it by 10 to get centimetres of water. So our peak pressure is there about 30 centimetres of water going down to a peak of about 15. Now, I know those numbers are a bit higher than normal ICU patients, but that's what's been reported for COVID patients. So that's what we've sort of set the system up to. Um, so it's just a 30 centimetres of water in spiritual pressure and about 15 of peak. Um, uh, the gas then flows back along the expiratory lip where there's uh, another valve. So when the inspiratory valve is open, uh, the expiratory valve is shut and vice versa. We've engineered this cam so that the IE ratio is one to two. So you, if you had a uh, 10 breaths per minute and a six second uh, cycle, two seconds would be inspiration, four seconds would be expiration. Uh, the, the expired gas then travels down um, uh, through uh, exhaust out this system. So this is your peak valve and you can see this beautiful little window my friend Jamie has engineered and uh, the uh, pressure in this peep is uh, we've set it to 15. Now to adjust that peep you just need to loosen off that that uh, 
connection there and slide the column up or down so you can sort of easily set the peak to whatever you want or, want or need it to be. Um, the gases then are exhaust out through here. At the moment we this would go to a scavenger on the wall so that no particles are going anywhere near your healthcare workers. We've just hooked up a little flow meter so, to, so, so you can see sort of the volumes and uh, uh, minute volumes that we're delivering. So right this second, this uh, machine's measuring 350 uh, mil tidal volume, and we've got a minute volume of roughly 5.4 liters per minute. Um, that's with a respiratory rate of roughly 15 or so. Um, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, other features just to point out, so we want safety and we want it super safe and we want it so that you're not relying on transducers or alarms or anything. And so what we're relying on is physics. So this extra tube here is sets the maximum pressure in the system. So it comes, it's connected uh, to the circuit and any time the pressure goes high, and we set it here to 32 centimetres, it immediately exhausts out. So that's the, the essentially a pop-off valve, it's the maximum pressure that the system can possibly reach um, for, for your patient. And it, uh, um, so it's super safe. Um, the other system we've, the container here is a negative pressure valve. So if your patient happens to, to take an, uh, is suddenly breathing spontaneously and takes a big breath in, um, these valves might cause trouble, so we've got a, a, a backstop so that the patient can actually breathe air back into the system. Um, so we've set it just to two centimeters, so they just need a, a, to generate a negative pressure of about minus two centimeters, and the patient will be able to, to breathe um, air into the system. Um, and that's essentially it. We're going to post uh, all the schem schematics, diagrams, STL files, uh, instructions. Um, uh, how it meets uh, various uh, you know, specifications that have been set by different countries for their regulations for ventilators. Um, and if you have any suggestions on how to improve it, or if you want to use it, or you want to modify it, or you, or you have anything that you would like to contribute, please do. Um, thank you very much, and, uh, and stay safe. Thank you.